This is the Bush Whisperer coming at you from the beautiful Penguin Sanctuary. Boulders, Cape Town, southern tip of Africa, Simon's Town. I was observing the Caduceus. And let's consider the Caduceus for a moment. This morning, as always, I was watching my son as it rose. I love my sun gazing, it's a very powerful practice. You should all try and do a bit of sun gazing if you can. You don't have to overdo it. You don't have to gaze directly at the sun if you can't. Just to observe the eastern sky when the sun is rising is a very powerful effect on the eyes, the polarizing light. I've done videos about it in series one. Realize that what I love you more than anything in the whole world. You do that, my sweetheart. So I'm going to be right there walking past you. You go and clean your hands. So realize that nature is the key. She's offering us a font of wisdom. And those of you that are interested, you can seek out these truths in books. But if you want to know where the truths came from, there was shaman meditating a long, long time ago. And they were meditating on nature. How do I know this? Well, I discovered the Caduceus. Where did I discover the Caduceus? I discover it re relatively often. This morning, standing watching at the sea, you see, I look for the Caduceus and I look for sacred geometry in the ocean. When the sun was rising, there comes a certain point where the ripples in the water start to reflect the triangles. And if you watch that, you'll notice they start to spin. There's this spinning golden little lights that spin upon the water's edge. And when the water patterns are right, when the, the ocean is teaching you the right, normally when the blue ray is active, for those of you that can see the blue ray, and you can learn to see this through the water breaking on the light, or the water changing its refraction of light upon the water, shall we say. You get to see between the layers of light and which rays are present. This is a deep mystical secret. I was observing the caduceus, and so you can see the map of DNA, which is what the Caduceus is, upon the water's edge when you watch the sunrise. Now you get an idea of where the ancients got this knowledge from. The shaman are embedded in nature. The shamanic practice is the observation of nature and allowing nature to talk to you and to talk through you and to walk and work through you so that the powers of nature can be released into the world through the act of becoming an expression of nature. And this is fundamentally what shamanism is if you get right down to it. Rhythm is the key and the practice of surrendering to the rhythm, rhythm and allowing the river of life to carry one into this field of consciousness is the path of the shaman. And so when one is observing the water's edge, and it doesn't have to be the, the sea. I've seen these things in trick bubbling brooks, in rivers, in streams. Where there are patterns of water moving, you will see and observe the sacred geometry operating. And so the caduceus is the fundamental, hello, structure that can be reflecting the human model. We see the caduceus in the Vedic tradition when we observe the map of Idam, Pingala and Shashumna, and the way in which the two serpent aspects of Kundalini wrap around the proverbial spine, the proverbial Shashumna, the balance of these two principles of energetic flow and relativity between different aspects of the consciousness field which are externalizing themselves in terms of the magnetic and the electrical principles which are the fundamental driving forces of life. These are reflections of life force, externalizations of the unstruck sound which is the true principle of life and this is the source from which electromagnetism arises. So to understand that the caduceus is the perfect symbol that symbolizes these two principles working towards a center, expressing consciousness in this way.
as a field and expressing the principle of quantum entanglement too by the notion of the two entangled serpents that are entangled from different directions. It's also subtly suggesting the toric forces that are the structure of reality. For two serpents entangled in different directions around each other, around a staff, can be considered as a toric form represented two-dimensionally as a concept. I want you to imagine this for a moment. So now you, when you look at a caduceus, you'll get a, a perspective of what it really is saying to you. It's talking to you about toric forces that come from the event horizon and move to the event horizon. That there are two aspects of these toric forces. That one is red and one is blue. That means one is negative and one is positive. One is male, one is female. So it's speaking about the forces of generation. It's speaking also about the forces of balance, right? As above, so below. The harmony between these two serpents, because they're in perfect state of balance, reflecting each other. It's also speaking in terms of octave. As we observe the caduceus, we see that there are frequencies of octave where these serpents touch. So it's expressing the musicalities of vibration. It's expressing the quantum entangling process, as we've mentioned, which is a reflection of how all things are related to all other things, that there is a correspondence between things. And so where these two serpents meet in the Shashumna reflects this correspondence of things. The causal principle is also expressed here because it shows how where the serpents meet at one point, they create a loop and they repeat that at another point, which creates another loop repeating that at another point, showing us the chain of causality, for causality is a chain of events. So we've got the causal principle reflected, the generative principle, for there are two serpents intertwining. There's a male serpent and a female serpent, and they're intertwined as if two snakes are mating, speaking of generation. So here we've got the second principle of Hermes, the third principle of Hermes, the fourth principle of Hermes, the fifth principle of Hermes, and the sixth principle of Hermes. Now we consider the rhythm aspect. Two serpents wrapped around each other, producing these polarities. If you observe the polarities as one ascends or descends down the catusius, one notices that there is a rhythm to the repetition of the loops. They are in a state of rhythm. So there's the rhythm principle being expressed. And when one considers the top of the staff of the caduceus, there would usually be an orb. The orb that is the essential point that both serpents' heads are looking at, wrapped around and finding a sense of balance. Sometimes looking from, sometimes looking at. Symbolized by the asp. So this is a fundamental expression. Good morning, Diane. This is a fundamental expression of the caduceus. And so here we are speaking about the principle of mentalism. That both serpents' heads are embedded somewhere at the top of the staff. And that the top of the staff becomes the emanation that flows down the staff. For it is the principle that these serpents are embodying. So we can see how the caduceus is an expression of all seven hermetic principles bound in a single glyph. It's a powerful glyph. Another form of observing the caduceus is the etzchim, the tree of life. The tree of life is also a caduceus, if you observe the tree of life very carefully. The chakric system of the Vedic path is the tree of life as well. It's also a caduceus. So it, it relates both to physicality, it relates both to consciousness, as it is an expression of the consciousness field, and it relates to the mental reality. And so we've got the blue serpent, we've got the red serpent, showing us that the manifestation of this universe is of a mental nature, and that the mental nature is an impression of the manifestation of this universe, and that these two are bound around each other through causal loops of fate, and that all things are connected and an expression of each other. So the caduceus is a very profoundly intense symbolism that is loaded with so much information I've only just begun to touch the top. This is an introduction to the caduceus. 
I would take time to consider symbols very deeply. What are they telling you? And here we can see the caduceus is the symbol of all of the chakras, the symbol of the sefirot. How is the sefirot reflected here? There's something to consider. But there are three, three fundamental principles being expressed in the caduceus. And those three fundamental principles being expressed in the caduceus are the red serpent, the blue serpent, you could call it the black serpent and the white serpent. But black and white becomes a dangerous concept that we like to term in ter tune, turn into morality, when actually these are principles of manifestation and creation and consciousness. So red and blue works better. When we consider that these two curving lines are wrapped around a single line which runs straight through the middle of it all, there is the principle of the mentalism that is expressed by the top of the staff that runs through the entire structure of creation. And that we notice that the points where the two serpents meet are always in the mental point. So the mentalism aspect we could think of as the monad. And the two serpents we could think of as the duad and the triad. And so here we have the first triad of the etrim, of the tree of life. And so we can consider the numerology, how it is bound, how numbers are expressed. We've got the first three numbers expressed. And then we are observing how these three numbers repeat themselves down through the chain of being. And the way in which, and I have discussed this in other talks, uh, you need to watch sequentially from beginning to end to get a real idea of all of these videos. Smash the like button and share this video so that other people can get an idea to get an organic experience of the caduceus because yeah there are a lot of books that are going to tell you about the caduceus but one needs to consider it from all perspectives in order to get a balanced idea i really recently did a video about growth and growth is fundamental it's a spiritual reality though we need to be able to empty our minds of what we think we know and start to become experientially engaged these things i speak to uh, they don't come from books i didn't see this in a book this comes from the deep field of contemplation, applying the principles of Hermetics that I learned when I was younger, applying the principles of the Kabbalah, applying the principles of the Vedic law that I've learned in order to gain self-knowledge. This is really what the path is about. From a shamanic perspective, nature should always be your teacher. Nature will never guide you wrong. Nature will always keep you on track. And so it's important for us to be able to embed our consciousness deeply into nature. For nature's expressions are going to teach us all there is to know about ourselves, all there is to know about the symbolisms, all there is to know about the occult truths of reality and the way in which we are connected to this reality and the way in which reality is expressed through our hearts and the way in which the consciousness field is the essential reality that we are experiencing here. Even though it seems rigid and fixed, this is just our minds playing tricks on us. And to understand this principle gives one a sense of incredible freedom. And this is also being reflected here in the caduceus. It's showing how these two serpents are wound around a rod and they could very easily unwind. Think about it. The whole nature of reality is just these three things. Two serpents wound around a rod. And this is quite powerful and quite potent because the two serpents are essentially aspects of the rod. They are just the metaphor of the rod. And that the rod is essentially what there is. So to understand this is to understand the nature of femininity and reality and the masculine principle. And that the feminine and the masculine are two emanations of the same thing. And that they aren't actually different. It's our perception that gives the difference. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do subscribe to the channel. Follow all of the videos sequentially so you get the most of them. This is a, an entire lecture being shared here, as was season one. Have a totally gorgeous day, and don't forget to contemplate nature. Seek her secrets. Seek her truths. Seek the knowledge that comes from within, and nature will become the revealing force that brings to you all that is, was, and shall be. This is the Bushwhisperer coming at you. Om Shanti.